welcome back to my channel for today's video i will be explaining how i got an a star in maths extended for igcc the tips maybe there are only three things that you have to follow in order to get an a star okay so first of all i just have to tell you that i was not good at maths I'm still not really good at it and I know that I'm Korean and you may think that like lots of Koreans they are really good at maths which is true because in Korea maths is really really hard the questions are hard everything is so hard it's like another level but I'm not like them because I didn't live in Korea since I was in fourth grade forward fifth grade so like i'm not korean in that part of math i didn't really have any basic i cannot really do this comparison uh, between schools because here in malaysia i was going to an international and in brazil i was going to a private school so i think that's not fair to compare them okay in brazil the exams they are really easy and they give you lots of time to solve them it's really easy to get marks and it, it's really easy to score it's really easy to pass for me i was okay at maths at the time so i only studied like the day before the exam i would revise some rules if the exam was about algebra i would just go like read a bit the rules and memorize them the day before or there were days that I just studied for the exam on that day in the morning. It was that simple. Okay, I think all of this was like too much information, but I just wanted to give you the general idea, the background that I had. I just want you to know that I was not good at maths at the beginning. Okay, then, then I come to Malaysia. Things uh, started to get a bit harder because it's like more complex and now I'm in an international school which follows this British curriculum system so it's like it's like going deep 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 and I only had very basic foundation so it was really hard to catch up with them in year 10 term 2 I was getting B for my term 2 report which means that I was not really good at maths okay so the first tip that i'm gonna give you is to always ask a teacher or a friend if there is a question that you don't know how to solve let's say that you are doing the homework and then you find a question that you literally have no idea how to do because you have never seen that type of the question or you just didn't understand a question therefore you don't know how to do it in that case, it's essential to ask somebody who knows how to do it. For instance, you may go to a teacher the next day. But the point here is you should never skip a question because probably the questions that you don't know, they are hard. That's why you don't know how to do it. And there is a like high chance of this question being in the exam. So you should know it. If you're having online lessons, it's really embarrassing if you ask a question in the middle of the class. I know because everybody is listening to you and you might be embarrassed because they might think that you are dumb. So you may avoid asking questions. It's okay, I was embarrassed too. In that case, I would just message the teacher because in Teams, there's this thing that you can message, like send a private message to anybody within the Teams. And I would just send a question to the teachers. I just take a picture of the question that I don't know and then just send it to them. They would reply to my messages. So the point that I'm trying to tell you is to never skip a question just because you don't know. It's fine to skip a question, but make sure that you know how to solve it at the end of the day. If the question was about the bearings, I would just search on YouTube. Bearing IGCC exam questions, slash higher, which means the hard ones. If you see the videos, most probably 
your question will be answered and these guys they're pretty good you can't really trust them and yeah that's it for the first tip i think i talked too much but i just want to help you guys you know i was going through this hard time last year i remember the day that i cried so much because if i'm not mistaken the total marks for paper four is 120 or something like that right and then i got like 20 something i was in the vacation i finished year 10 and then i was in like this two months almost two months break vacation and then i had this paper four i decided okay just let's do it <laughs> let's just see how much i know i did the questions and then i got 20 one something out of 120 and i was so desperate and i was like crying a lot that day yeah i was very sad so that day i was searching on youtube how to get a's or a stars in maths igcc <laughs> but i never thought that i would get an a star really smart people get a star not someone like me normal this video is going to be helpful if you decide to follow it okay so finally let's go to second tip second tip is to always do practice questions there are tons of questions on your textbook of course and if you think that they are not enough you can just search online you can just search algebra exam style questions i just see and they're gonna like show show you a lot of them and that's all for the second tip you have to do lots of practice questions and past papers of course past paper they are your best friends so this is paper two and this is pretty easy if you're in your 11 like beginning i think you have to already know how to do that i didn't do that much but i did uh, okay i didn't do that much and this is paper four here okay, i didn't do that much but okay see i did the personally i tried to focus more on paper four because i know it was harder than paper two of course so i just spend more time doing paper four questions so we were given this 2018 paper so this i did like everything Ta -da. and this is 2019 paper the school gave us three sets 18 19 20. This is 2020. 2020. And then I finished with them too. But still, even after doing this past paper that I have and the past paper that I got from school, I wasn't sure if I could actually do the questions myself, if I can remember the question that I didn't know how to do. So then I printed all of them again at home. And I just did them all. I basically did them three times so the past paper that I have and the, this past paper that I got and so that basically means that I know every question since 2018 till 2020 I know every single of them and I know how to solve like everything so for these I just printed the questions like topic by topic from i don't know two three websites and then i just put everything in this one and everything in conclusion you have to do at least this much of questions in order to get an a star okay so for the last tip is you have to get yourself two notebooks one is for you to write all the formulas and for each formula i would write the type of question that that particular topic offers you know like because 
every topic has different type of questions so i would put common question underneath just to see how the questions are formed i have this one which is all about the formulas so i got like all of these from a website and this website was really good because it was divided into categories from like e e grade topics until a grade topics search math genie and click it you click the first thing that appears which is GCSE revision as you can see there is topic examples exam questions and even the solutions as you go through it you might see that they cover all the topics in your syllabus and for the second uh, notebook you just write all the questions that you got wrong when doing the correction, you just circle the ones that you got right and I would just like cross out the questions that I got like wrong in order to avoid making mistakes again, like the mistake you have already made if you got it wrong once you don't have to make the same mistake again right you just learn from your mistake so in this same notebook you can put the questions that you didn't know how to solve but after asking the teacher or after looking into the mark scheme you know how to do it now so you just put the question in this notebook and you can just refer to it once in a while just to make sure that you like kind of memorize uh the, the style of solving it i'd say like how to do it like you kind of memorize the solution or the working and if you keep doing the past papers you're gonna notice the style of the questions so the questions are pretty much the same and they just alter the numbers or the names so it's pretty simple if you just get used to their style and it's also important that you refer your answer to mark scheme because they don't just give the marks like on your final answers but you can also get marks from your working so your working is very important just make sure that you never miss anything you know lastly i am going to tell you that um if you have no one to ask the questions that you don't know like for instance your teacher i don't know they don't really know how to teach and you have no one to ask you can just come to me i mean i can help you with this ig questions because i have already done it but i cannot really guarantee you because i'm not still really good at it but if you DM me or if you send me an email with a picture uh, of the question that you don't know, I can try to help you. I will just explain them to you. I hope that this way you can be like more. I really, I don't know, just want to help you out. Just come to me. You guys are welcome, always welcome, and I really appreciate it, you know. I will be glad to help you out. Anyways, um, that's it for today's video, and I really hope that this video was helpful. Yeah, that's it. Have a nice day, nice evening, and see you in the next video.
in IGCC first language. What first language? <laughs> Post okay, blah, blah blah. Like, but see, like you should just go straight to the teacher. You should just go to. You just should. <laughs> Okay, so basically, here, the, the yellow curler 